Hello, hello. Um, I'm Sarah, and uh, I don't know. I feel like I should record something. It's the month of October, Halloween month, so let's talk about something really gross and creepy. Lice. Um, <laughs> growing up in a warm climate like Brazil, lice was something we dealt with regular. Um, if this is going to make you itch like crazy, just exit um real quick um like subscribe comment share whatever um before i go into my story i will say as a hairstylist and in my experience overseas anybody can get lice it doesn't matter the texture of your hair there is a common misconception that if your hair is uh coilier tighter highly textured hair that you cannot get lice that is not correct that is just inaccurate uh, misinformation it is absolutely possible to get it it is less likely but it is absolutely possible go look it up if you don't believe me anyways so growing up in brazil i saw people with every single texture have lice so it does actually happen anyways living in large communes where women were I won't say not allowed, but basically not allowed to cut their hair. It was it, it, unheard of, just unheard of. Um, I mean, I cut my hair and everyone thought I was a boy simply because my hair was short. Um, so, yeah, it was just something people did not do. So women all had long hair. And imagine getting lice when you have long, long hair. And I had long curly hair. Oh, I should have shown you what it looks like. <laughs> I had someone the other day go like, wait, you don't brush your hair all week? I'm like, no, I brush it right before I get in the shower. That's it. Um, yeah, I, you don't brush curly hair unless you're trying to get it to expand and get the big fluffy hair. Then yes, you can brush it. So when you get lice and your hair is like past your butt, almost to your knees, and you got to use those little tiny combs to comb through. And then of course, not wanting to spend money on proper, um, medications and treatments for it and you had a commune of 60 plus people let's say for a more average size commune man lice would come and it would stay it would stay for a long time and i remember having lice many times in my childhood um the most memorable time was around when i was 14 and it was just before my mom came to the states to get medical treatment for her brain tumor um, but me and several of my sisters were all living in Salvador Bahia and that's in Brazil and lice just was sweeping through and we tried a lot of different treatments um, but of course everything was diluted in order to cover more heads but if you dilute medication it doesn't work the way it's supposed to and I remember after going through the whole set of treatment um, still I could feel like there was so many and I could feel them moving and crawling around on my head like I would make up stories of what they were doing and going to the store and like I could literally feel like my whole scalp was just tingling with these little creepy crawlers all over and it itched so bad and then they tried another treatment which was uh petroleum not petroleum jelly petroleum like it smelt like a gas station on my head um good thing i wasn't a smoker back then um hmm. but yeah i it it was horrendous and anyone who had to have this treatment no one would want to be around you it, it was really really atrocious and when you'd have the like the plastic or whatever over your head you could literally feel them running and trying to bounce off of your head in the suffocation and still it did not fix it how my hair didn't just melt off i don't know um we tried what all did we try shit um, I remember the one that was successful. It was this medicated conditioner. It was actually the nicest treatment that we did. It was a medicated conditioner and you would shampoo your hair and then you would put this conditioner in and you would leave it in all day. And 
just put the hair up and put the bag on it and leave it all day and then the next day you would rinse the hair shampoo put this conditioner in again that one actually did work and it left your hair feeling kind of nice and on our bus trip back to Brasilia for when my mom was leaving for the States that what we had that treatment on our hair when we went there and finished the treatment off in Brasilia before she came for the States so that was the last time I remember having lice and I was 14 and oh my goodness it's so in like oh it's emblazoned in my memory that oh it was horrible and atrocious lice are horrible I absolutely oh so since that was a short story with lice and creepy crawlies let's switch to some other creepy crawly things um in Brazil there is a bug that is known as bichu jipe which just means like foot bug and it would burrow into typically your feet, um, oftentimes found in like the dirt or the sand or things like that. It's a parasite and it burrows in, it kind of looks like a, like a deep blackhead, but it's like a hole in your foot. And I have had that in my foot. Um, I forget where I was, but yeah, it burrows in, it's really not great um and some people can have just like a million little well not a million but a lot of little holes in their feet um i've been watching a lot of dr pimple popper so maybe i'm thinking of like really creepy things that happen on the skin um uh yeah bishupa is one of the um parasites we had to deal with worms was another parasite we had to deal with um so um yeah again we did not go to doctors in this cult for any of you who are new here cult life okay we did not go to doctors typically for just about anything um so worms was something that we would treat in house um we would we would treat our water um to help avoid but even rinsing your mouth or you know some water getting in your mouth when you're showering you can still get parasites such as worms and we would regularly as children be tested for worms um tape wrapped around the finger backwards and touched on your bum hole and you could lift it away and you could typically see little worms in there if someone had it um i typically remember being checked by my mom but that was not always the case because again our parents didn't exactly raise us exclusively um or even primarily in a lot of cases so um one of their solutions for it was to insert uh uh, not the whole what do you call the single clove of garlic so you have the you have the whole clove and then the little is that the clove I, I should have looked into this before I started recording but anyways a little garlic like piece um they would insert that in the back end as a what do you call a suppository that's where oh my god my brain is not functioning so as a suppository um we also to avoid mosquito bites would puncture uh garlic is it a clove a garlic thingy and swallow it like a pill in order to prevent being bit by mosquitoes because the garlic in it um mosquitoes are attracted to certain um to sweet blood and things like that garlic <laughs> garlic wards off the blood suckers <laughs> literally the mosquitoes don't care for garlic um yeah there would be times when worms would be going around a commune and it was very common to you know be part of a lineup and pull down your pants and have someone insert a garlic thing into your bum um which i'm pretty sure is just not just not right um yeah it didn't like there's so many things that should have been a private situation between a parent and a child or consulting a doctor um <clears throat> let's see what other creepy gross things can i talk about for halloween month um <laughs> uh i'm already giving myself like gross disturbing thoughts um 
flashbacks with <laughs> lice and bishijipe and oh bat fly yeah when i was i want to say about seven uh maybe six seven seven i think um I got bit is what I assumed it was. It felt like a bite on my leg, um, on my knee. And over time, it did not heal. Like it was puffy, you know, but then the puffiness, instead of going down, started getting bigger and bigger until I had like a bump that was about, I don't know, like the size of a 50 cent piece maybe. And it was raised I don't know a half inch an inch um and there was still like a tight like the hole the bite hole what I thought was the bite um there was like a slight opening well one day I just started picking at it and I started pushing on it and all these little maggots came out of my knee and um apparently the bot fly had laid its eggs in my knee it wasn't a bite it was yeah nesting i guess um yeah that was that was disturbing and disgusting i did not see a doctor for that luckily that did heal up um on its own but yeah that was gross oh and as an adult i woke up one morning with a it was the day after halloween so perfect halloween story these are just random friggin gross stories okay <coughs> that I did not plan as usual. So, um, Halloween, oh, like eight years or so ago, I woke up the next morning not feeling the best and I called in sick to work and I laid back down and went to sleep. And a while later I was, I felt in my ear, like it, it sounded like water and it felt like water was like running out of my ear and I'm like what is happening like is it's my are my sinuses draining does this have to do with how unwell I feel I really wasn't sure and um so I like rested my head on was kind of shaking it kind of like swimmer's ear thinking that I just had like clogged water which didn't make sense for you know November 1st morning of November 1st in Minnesota um it's too cold to be swimming all the pools are shut down so unless it's an indoor pool which i did not have access to at the time didn't make sense to have swimmers ear but who knows weirder things have happened so yeah i was trying to shake the water out of my ear and um I, I, it felt like just water was just gushing out like the it felt like water was gushing out and i lifted my head to look at the soaking wet pillow and it was dry it was not soaking wet at all and I was rather surprised and I looked down and all of a sudden this spider just plopped out of my ear and it was just a little tiny house spider and it just landed was a little stunned for a moment and then started just trotting off on its merry little way and I'm like how dare you fiddle around inside my ear inner ear tube thingies and then you just think you're just gonna walk away like nothing happened so I gave him a little flick I didn't kill it I don't think maybe I did I'm not sure but yeah I still of all days it was just not the day for that I wasn't feeling well and the morning after Halloween um for the next couple months I would have these nightmares that I was gonna wake up like it had left like an egg sack or something in my ear and I would have these nightmares of it did not leave an air sack I egg sack I had nightmares that it had um and I would you know imagine I was going to wake up with just like horror story like thousands of like little tiny spiders all over my body um yes it was a very creepy notion and I'm very glad it did not leave an egg sack don't know why it went inside my ear uh, um but yeah that was creepy as fuck so yeah oh and yeah i'm in my bedroom today the basement starts getting cold as the weather gets cold so i decided to relocate to my bedroom i might have to do some rearranging of pictures to make it more visually appealing and my light is a little different um 
Oh, I have my light is cool actually. Um, no one stays till the end of this, so I can just <laughs> it changes color. It is the dopest light. Totally aside, um, Jordan wanted to get uh um phone operated light and he uh, we never got around to getting it. He was in charge of that because technology was his thing. And after he passed, um, I... This video is about a whole lot of nothing. It's going everywhere now. Um, but after he passed, I decided to get one. And I got one, and it was a piece of shit. It did not link to my phone. It absolutely was just a pain in the ass to try to figure out. So... Um, I ordered these on Amazon that work on a remote. Don't come at me for Amazon. I can't go to stores. I've discussed this before. Severe anxiety. But anyways, yeah, this one has, it just does the rainbow. It does the different lighting. And I mostly keep it on just the regular color. But it is really cool that it just can kind of flick through the different rainbow colors. And yeah, and I operate it by remote so I can just be laying in bed and decide that it's time to turn it on or turn it off instead of having to get up or do a clap on clap off um so yeah this is my mini this light is awesome and yeah I like the rainbow light and I have one of these at my front door and I just tell people the house with the rainbow light when I'm having things delivered after dark because it makes it easier for delivery people to find our home um yeah rainbows are the best so yeah that is the light oh what did i do now did i go dark um i don't even know what i'm doing anymore <laughs> oh wait ah i figured it out oh my god it was too dark and i could not figure that shit out okay so that's the light in my room and yeah that's a video. I'm using a new mic thing, so hopefully the sound is okay. And yeah. Yeah. I guess <laughs> that's it. Man, I really should plan shit better. Um, yeah. But yeah, happy Halloween month. Ciao.